Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to work on this tassel lariat necklace. And it's really a very fun necklace to make. It's not hard. I've used some of the dollar bead box beads here, these pretty hearts. Um, this bead here. I added my own, some of my own rondelles and a clasp. I use their beading wire, but you can really make this with anything that you have. If you have the wire and you have the, the beads, you really can choose anything that you love to make this. All right, so I'm going to clear the decks immediately and get a materials list going so we can get started on this. See you in a minute. Okay, let's get our materials list going. So you're going to need some three millimeter fire polish, three millimeter round beads of any kind. I have some fire polish. These are the Navy Nebulous Luster from the bead box. I have some 3mm rondelles. I'm going to use both. You can use one or the other. You can really choose anything you like as far as um, the beads you want to use here. I've got some 4mm beads and these are a stone and I don't know the name of it. It's probably some kind of quartz. Uh, I just I didn't have the, um, the tag on it. So that's about a 4mm there. I need some 15 o seed beads and some 11 o seed beads. I'm using the Miyuki Light Smoky Pewter. You'll need a 12 millimeter round bead or bigger. This one I think is more of a rondelle shape. Uh, this is a round. This is a lapis bead. This is also from the bead box. You need a six or eight millimeter round. That's going to be for the bead, the bead that goes above this big bead. You'll need some either two millimeter drock beads two millimeter round beads, and these are metal, sterling silver metal beads, or an 11 -0. You'll need two filigree or any kind of end caps. I'm going to go on either side of the bead here. You need a, an eight millimeter jump ring. I have a two inch eye pin here. This is a rather thick one. This is a, probably a 20 or 18 gauge. 20, 22 is probably better because you're going gonna to be wrapping a loop. You'll need some crimp beads, and here I have some crimp covers. Those are here. They're really pretty when you use a crimp cover. I need a toggle clasp. We've got some uh, Fireline 8 pound. We've got some soft touch beading wire, and this is my. This is the very fine, but you can use you know, a little thicker one. It doesn't really matter. And actually this month's bead box has some gold in it. So if you're using bronze or gold beads, you can use that. Let's see. You'll need um, a size 10 beading needle. A little stop bead right there. You need your tools, whatever you have. You know, you'd, you'll need a, a round nose and a, a flat nose and a cutter. I have another flat, a wide flat nose here for holding things. So, you know, any tools that you have, as long as you have a cutter and a round nose um, pliers, you could get away with it. A flat nose or needle nose, whatever you call that, would be a really good thing to have too to do the loop. All right, so I think that's about it. Anything I missed, I will put in the description box underneath the video. I will put all these colors uh, and where I purchased the beads that I know in the description box under the video, as well as the beads that I use from the dollar bead box, I'll put which box, which boxes I got them from. All right, so we're going to start with this guy here. So this is the little beaded bale or beaded bead part. So for that, you're going to need your your uh, three millimeters or your rondelles, your any three millimeter, your 11 O's and your 15 O's. So we'll get started making that in the next segment. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, let's get started. So thread your needle with about two and a half feet of thread. Put on a stop bead and leave about a six inch tail. So we're going to start with this beaded bead here, which is actually the beaded bale, the interlaced beaded bale. I have a video for that on my channel if, um, if you want to look, look at that. But we're going to go through the whole thing anyway. So pick up four 11 -0 seed beads. Drop those down to your stop bead. Come up the first seed bead after your stop bead. I need to make that into a little right angle weave unit. Then pick up a three millimeter 
and four 11 O's. Oops. Drop those down to the unit. Come up the first seed bead after the three millimeter. Make sure that turns into a, a unit. That's what it looks like. Come down the side seed bead of this unit and the bottom seed bead. Pick up three 11 O's. Coming out of here, let's come around the other side of that bead put on another unit. Pick up a three millimeter. Sew through the bottom seed bead of that next unit. That looks a little wonky and messy now, but it'll all straighten out. Let's pick up three 11 O's. Coming out of here, right here, just come around the other side of that seed bead. to make another unit. Come down the side seed bead and the bottom seed bead of that unit. Pick up three 11 O's. Coming out of here, come to the other side of that bead. another unit. Pick up a three millimeter, sew through the bottom seed bead of the next unit. Then again, pick up three 11 O's, come out of here, sew through the other side of that seed bead to make another unit. Needle through the side seed bead and the bottom seed bead. Pick up three 11 O's. You're coming out of here. Come around. Make another unit. Pick up a three millimeter. So through the bottom seed bead of the next unit. Pick up three 11 O's, coming out of here, come around the other side, sew through that bead to make another unit. Come through the bottom seed bead, the side seed bead and the bottom seed, seed bead. You have another unit on. So we're just going to continue doing this until you have 10 of your center beads on. So 10 of the three millimeters. And the way I want you to end this is, so when you're at this point, instead of putting on another right angle weave unit, I just want you to take your 10th bead and just, you're coming, you're coming out of this seed bead, just sew through this one. And that's how you're going to end it. So you're just, you're not going to put those two extra right angle, right angle weave units on. And that way, the, the both ends are the same and then we'll, we're going to sew it together and make a bead out of it. All right, so I'm going to continue. So you remember you have 10 beads on here. I just wanted to show you the ending. So get those 10 on and then meet me back here and we'll continue. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back and I've got all my 10 beads on and my I have my thread coming out right here. I've taken off my uh, stop bead and I sewed the tail in just to get it out of the way. It was bugging me. So you can do that. And then we want to reinforce this whole piece down to the other end. So coming out of this 11-0 here, I'm just going to come across like that to this bottom seed bead of that unit. And then I'm just going to come up these three beads. Then 
and I'm going to come across this bead. And I'm going to come down the next three. And you want to do this nice and snug, so give it a little tug as you're doing it, and it'll start to curve. It's going to curve into a bead shape. So I'm coming across this bead and through these three. Okay, so keep doing that until you get to the very end, and then meet me back here, and we'll sew it together. All right, see you in a few. Okay, so I've got my my piece all sewn together and reinforced, and it is um, has has curved. So now we're going to make a a bead out of it, or a bale, or whatever. You were just going to sew the ends together. So I'm just going to actually take a pencil. You don't need to use a pencil, but you could. And I've just put my piece around the pencil, maybe because it would be easier for you to see it. And we're going to use our 11 O's and our 15 O's. So let's start with the 11 O's. We're going to just make a right angle weave unit here and here to connect the two ends together. So pick up an 11 O coming out of here. Just come through this one. up another 11 -0. come through this one. So we've just made that unit to connect, to make that, uh, to make a right angle weave unit. We added two beads. So then come down the side bead, come through the bottom bead, the three millimeter and the next bead, that next 11 -0. Now we have these two beads that we have to make a unit out of. So pick up one 11 0. Come through this one. And my bead's a little st stuck with the coating. Okay, there we go. Pick up another 11 0 and come through this one. I've just made that other unit. And when I take it off this, see how I've got it's all sewn together. All right, so now I just want you to just secure that a little bit. So we're coming out of here. Just come up this one. Come across these three. Like that, and now we have it secured. All right, so get to that point, and then meet me back here, and we're going to put some 15 O's around both ends, and it's going to close it up. All right, see you in a few. All right, let's close this up. So we're coming out of this bead right here, after the three millimeter. Just advance your needle through the 11 O on the side there. Then you're going to pick up your 15 O come through the next bead. Like that. And here I'll put it back on its the pencil for a minute. And then you're just going to put a 15 note in between each 11 note. So coming out of here, come through this one. Pick up a 15 note. Come through the next one. Fifteen O. Next one. You're gonna do that all the way around. It's just going to close it up. I figured I'd just hang with you for a second and we do it together. So here I'm coming to the last bead. And I'm just going to, I'm just I'm sewing through all, all the beads again. Like that. 
So with all the 11 O's and 15 O's. And at this point, you might want to, if you have it on a pencil, you might want to take it off because you want to pull it tight. So you see how that curves in? So you want to make sure that it, it, it curves in. So you don't want you want to you want to keep it on, you don't want to put on something that's gonna make it keep it wide. Alright? So here, so just get to that point and come out an out of an 11 O. So I'm coming out of this one. I'm just going to come through this one so that this is the 11 I'm coming out of. I'm going to come up through that side bead of that right angle weave unit through the 3 millimeter and the 11 on the other side. And I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm coming out of the 11 I'm going to come through that top 11 and start adding 15 O's. All right, so get that, do that, and when you're done, meet me back here, and we'll have our little uh, accent piece there, our little sort of beaded bead. All right, see you. Okay, we're back, and before we get started making the tassel, I just wanted you, to, I want you to sew this, these ends in. So here's my, my little beaded bead, and I've, re, I've done all my sewing around either end. I'm coming out of. Let's see, I'm coming out of. Here, let me come this way. I should be, you should be coming out of. 11 0 on the side. Just like that. So then come through this 11 0. Like that. So we're just going to the top seed bead of that unit. Then just pick up a thread between the 3 millimeter and that bead. Like that. Make a loop your half hitch knot. Go through the three millimeter in the next 11 0 like that. And you can continue to do that if you have room in your bead, if or if your bead isn't um, as snug as you want it to be. But it, it should be okay at this point. Mine's fine, so I'm not going to go on, but you can keep doing that and tighten it up a little bit if you need to. All right, so this is what it looks like. Um, so get that done and meet me back here, and we're going to start the tassel. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back, so let's start a tassel. So I'm just gonna pull it over. So this is going to be my sequence. I made it one bead longer than this one, just because. So actually, let me put this here. So if you notice with the pink one, I have little hearts, but you know, as I said, I didn't have the hearts, so I'm using these blue beads. And also with the pink one, I didn't have enough hearts to do all the strands with hearts, so I mixed them up. So you can do that as well. I think it, it helps. It, it's kind of nice to mix them up because then it's not so wide, but it's up to you. This is totally up to you, this part. All right, so here's my eye pin. This is how it's going to go. So the tassel is going to be attached to this part of the eye pin. So thread, about four feet of thread onto your needle. Put on a stop bead and leave about a 12-inch tail because we're going to do the last strand with the thread on the other side of the stop bead. Take your needle and thread and go right through with nothing on them, no beads on it. Just go through the eye pin. And the stop bead should stop you from going through completely. All right, and then we're going to start putting on our beads. So we're starting with a 2 millimeter, the bigger bead, and then the sequence, a sequence of one 2 millimeter, or you can use a, an 11 0, a rondelle, and a 2 millimeter. And I'm going to put on the next big bead, and then my sequence of the 2 millimeter or 11 0, the little rondelle, and the two. If I can get it, there we go, like that. So it starts out with just this silver bead and then the big bead. And then we're going to alternate all the way down, like this. with that big bead and then the three bead sequence just like that I'm ending with the one seed bead like that All right so when I pull that down that's what it looks like 
out. So then I'm going to skip this last bead. I'm going to come up through all the beads. If you can't get them all at once, which you probably can't, because it's pretty long, just do them a little at a time. Like that. And you want to keep it loose at this point. You don't want it all kinked up. So keep coming through all the beads. Like that. And then the first one's pretty important. You want to make sure everybody is nice and they want it fluid. Right, so I'm just going to Loosen them up a little bit. There we go. Just like that. Alright, so now come through the last bead. So that's my little my little two millimeter right here. Like that. Alright, so this is what it looks like. I'm just gonna pull the the stop bead away for a second. Once you get the first one on, it's easy. I'll pull in a little bit just to show you what I want you to do here. So if you notice you're coming, this is, I'm coming out of this bead here. Here's my thread coming down. Just come through the other side of it. You see how that's looping around the, see that? See how it loops around the, the loop, the, um, the eye pin, you know, the eye of the pin there, just like that, all right? And that's what you want to keep doing. So, each time you add one, you're going to loop around that eye pin like that, and you're going to add as many as you like. So you can add, um, I have eight here, you can do eight, ten, whatever looks good. I think I'm going to do ten because this bead is a little bit bigger because I used the, let me pull out a little bit, I used the um, three millimeter fire polish, so it made it a little bit higher than the, um, than the rondelles on the pink one. So I think I'll do maybe an extra couple of strands and make them any way you like them. You know, you can, like I said, just make all kinds of accent beads, make them all the same. It doesn't really matter. So then keep doing that and then meet me back here and we will put the whole thing together. All right, see any of you. Okay, I just can't, I'm back for a second because I'm done with seven of my pieces and I think eight's going to do it for me and I'll show you in a minute why, but I just want to show you what to do at the end. So I used a little less thread and I'm a little short, so... <laughs> Here's my last one, and I've come all the way down, come back up again. I'm going to pull in super tight. I'm going to make the loop, so I'm just coming back through this loop, and that kind of makes a loop around, see, around there. And then I want you to come back through your beads. Just be very gentle with this because we're going to tie some knots here. So I've just come back around the loop and I'm going back down that same strand of beads. You see that? And that's kind of um, securing it. And then I want you to do some half hitch knots here. So just come around. Just make sure you're... Ugh, I'm sorry that I'm short. Here, let me see if I can get a loop. Okay, so I got a loop. So just make sure when you do a half hitch knot that the loop comes out in between the beads, just like that. So here I've got, did I get my knot in? I'm not sure. Let me try that again. So I'm going to come around. You'll have more thread on your needle than I do. I'm going to make my loop. Okay, so here's my loop. I'm going to put the loop right there in between the beads and then here we go. When I tie it down it makes a knot and then I'm going to come down a few more beads like this. And you'll make, you can make a couple more knots and then when you hold it up you see you have all these loops um, of beads of um, thread around your bottom piece just like that. So you're all secure right here. So you're all looped up. And then um, we're going to do this one in a minute. I just want to show you how it looks with the with this particular um, 
you know, with this beaded bead on here. So I'm just going to put these things on just, just to give you a look. We're not going to do this yet. I just want to show you how, how it's going to look and to see if you'll be happy with that tassel. So this is how the tassel looks um, with eight strands of those big beads. I kind of like it this way. I just don't want it too thick and too big, and I love that it's longer. Um, I like that it's longer and a little bit thinner. So I'm going to be adding one more one more strand on, and you're going to take your stop bead off here, and you're going to, let me pull this apart. It's not exciting that we're getting close to putting it together. So you're just going to take your stop bead off, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to do one more strand, loop it around, and then you're going to tie it, you know, tie it off on the next strand like we did that other strand. So go get that done, and then meet me back here, and we'll continue. All right, see you in a few. Okay, so let's make this into a tassel. So we're going to do it pretty much like the the pink one. So here everybody's on and all connected. If you're a little concerned about the the threads, you can put a little glue on there. You could even put a needle through a needle and thread through all the loops and tie, and you know tie them closed if you like. I'm not too concerned about it. This one is, I did it, this one I did the exact same way and it's fine. But you know, that those are a couple things you can do if you're concerned about that. So I'm just putting, look at this terrible eye pen. <laughs> the beaded bead. I'm going to put on the end cap, the bead cap. My big bead. Yeah, these are actually a terrible and they're a little too thick. Um, but it's all I had. So I'm putting in the other bead cap on, so this is how it looks. And then I'm going to put... Oops. And I'm going to put this other bead on. So this is what I have. Alright. Now we're going to wrap a loop. So we're going to do this part right there. So you really you should have a one of those flat nose pliers here, and I don't have a th the thin one, like a needle nose, it holds it much better. You want to make sure this is pushed down. You don't want any space underneath. You want to push, push, push. Make sure it's nice and secure there. Okay. Like that. Alright, then I'm going to just bend this over, like that. Look at that terrible head. eye pin. Okay, like that. So it's bent over. Or I'll take this out and show you. That's what it looks like. Now I'm going to turn my pliers around and put them, put it in like that. So I'm using my round nose now. And just make sure that you're, you know, that it's not loose. You want it nice and snug. Then I'm just going to bend this over the top like that. I'm going to pull it out and show you what it looks like. That's what it looks like. I'm going to put my pliers back in this way. Make sure it's nice and snug. And I'm just going to take this back part of it and just do that. So I've, ra I've, got, I've got it around one side of the loop. Now you can just use, I have a, a wide flat nose here, and then you just want to wrap your loop. I'm going to need to use you can do it with your finger, or you can do it with your, make sure I'm in frame, your chain nose here. I'm always a little clumsy doing this. I'm just going to, it's going to go around. These, this is way too thick. I'm going to use my finger a little bit on that. All right, and then I'm going to, I'm going to bring that around a little bit more. I just want to put this guy in here, so like that. Okay, that's better. Then I'm going to just bring this around. As much as, as many times as I can. So you'll fit about three wraps, like that. Okay. And then you can put your, you can put your round nose back in it, sort of. Mess with the loop a little bit, take your flat, flatten it out, squish that in in the back, and there you so you've got your loop. And now it's nice and tightly wrapped so that um, I can add the, the jump ring on. Alright, so get that done and you know, straighten it 
Mine's a little crooked. You can straighten it, straighten it out a little bit. I'm making it a little worse. Okay, here we go. All right, well, that's good enough. <laughs> okay, you'll be able to do better than, than I do on camera. All right, so get that done and then meet me back here and we'll do the next step. See you in a minute. Okay, we're back, so we're gonna make this into a lariat now. So the, the way this is constructed is we have the clasp here and two pieces. So this goes around the neck and then this goes down the, um, the front. So for my necklace, this is about 19 inches that comes around my neck, falls around my right above the cleavage on the decollete, over that bump, you know, that bone, and it just falls really nicely if, if this falls there for me. And then this part, this little part is three inches and then whatever size the tassel is. So the tassel will hang down really pretty. All right, so cut a piece of your soft flex about nine inches and another piece around 24 inches. So we have enough to play with at either end. Have ready, you know, your, your, um, all your pieces here. So here, I've done that and I've already strung on some beads and I'll just show you my sequence, but you can do any sequence you like. So for, for it to come out, you know, about the same size as this, I'm using the three millimeter fire polish. If you use rondelles, they're a little, you know, they're not as wide, so you can use more, less, you know, whichever works for you. If you're doing this sequence, this is how I've strung them on. So here I'll do it. Here I'll go like this. So let's say this is my tassel. So I have a three millimeter fire polish, and then I just changed it up by putting a little uh, two millimeter uh, sterling silver round in there, just because I'm using a darker color, so I think it needs a little pop. So I have a two millimeter, the four, the two, and then I put on six of my three millimeter beads, and then I just did a re repetition I re three times and four times for this guy. And then at the end, I just put on a three millimeter so that they match at either end. So that's what it looks like. You can do anything you like, of course. You know, whatever you love. You can use bicones, you can use anything. Stones, this, that, doesn't really matter. So just get to that point and then we'll come back and uh, we'll do some crimping. All right, see you in a few. Okay, so here's my piece. Pick up one of your crimp beads. I'm pulling for this. Slide it on. Come through the loop, that eight millimeter jump ring that we have on the tassel. And then back through the crimp bead, like that. So here I'm looped around. and then through the three millimeter and as many beads as you can get through at this point. You know, a few just to pull that tail through. And then I'm just going to pull it like this. All right, that's what I have. And then I'm going to crimp. If you have a crimping tool, use that. I keep forgetting to use my crimping tool, so I'm just going to use, and it's it's over on the other side of the room, so I'm just going to use my flat nose. So for those of you who don't have a crimping tool, very easy. I'll pull on super tight for the crimp. Just take your flat nose, and I did find my little needle nose here. This is perfect for this. Give it a nice squeeze like that. Now you crimped. Grab a cover, if you're using the crimp cover. Pop that on. Here, I'll just pick it up with, I'll try to do it with my tools. So let's see, here we go. So I put it on like that, and then I'm just going to give it a little squeeze, just gentle, just to get it on. Whoops, that didn't go on. Let's try again, okay. I'm just going to hold it and I'll turn it this way. Maybe this will work out better. And then I'm going to grab my other pliers and I'm going to pull it down. Make sure the crimp cover covers it. If it doesn't, you might need a bigger one. I'm wondering if this one is, is big enough. I think we can kind of make this fit. All right, so I'm just going to gently squeeze it, okay, like that. 
Okay, that worked. Probably could have used a slightly bigger one because it's a little, I think it's, okay, there we go. Now I have it closed. Actually, that worked out very well. So just, you know, play with it, but do it gently because you can really smash these things and then they get all out of shape. And then take your wire cutters, cut off your extra thread. Make sure you, if you have kitties, you put all your extra threads in the trash immediately because they love them, or your extra wire. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so very pretty, nice little connection. All right, so get that done. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna do it in small segments. Get that done, and then we'll start the other side. All right, seeing a few. Okay, we're back. I'm getting very excited. All right, so here we are. Everything looks great. So we're gonna do the other side. We're gonna connect this side to the loop part of our clasp. So here I have this little heart. And just to give you a heads up on what I did, there was a loop on this heart and I, I just took my wire cutters and I snipped it off because I wanted to connect it to the side of this. Now, I don't think you have to do that, but I'm going to do that anyway. So here's my original clasp. I just took my wire cutters. Here's where the loop was and I, I just snipped it off. You don't have to do that. You can just connect to this guy. That's fine also. Um, you can also buy these links or these um, rings, excuse me, without anything attached to them. And this is, I got these, I think, at Joanne Fabrics. And I'll put this in the description box under the video. And it just matches, you know, goes well with that. But you can just cut it off or just leave it. I'm just, I cut it off because that's just, you know, that's the way I was doing it. All right, so here, here's the other end of that piece. I'm just going to put on a crimp bead. I'm going to come through my circle like that. I'll pull in for this. Again, I'm just going to go through the crimp bead and a couple of beads, whatever I can fit through. Oh, just a few of them. Usually pops out on its own. There we go. Just going to. Wrap it with my tool. And then just when you're doing this side, just make sure that before you tighten it down, that everybody is, you know, that all your beads are next to one another and it's a nice, um, you're not kinking them too much. They have a little bit of space. So you want to play with that a little bit. That's important because you want it to look beautiful. So here, I don't mind if the loop up here is bigger. Uh, you just don't want too many, uh, too much of your wire showing in the bottom. So I'm just going to pull a little bit more just to get them a little closer. But I want to fit my crimp bead in there. So I think that's good. And I'm going to just gonna pull this down a little bit. And I'm going to, I just want to make sure. I'll give this a little pull to make sure I don't have much thread. Okay. I just want to pop that down. Okay, so I'm just going to crimp. I'm going to put on a cover. Like that. Just like we did before. Give it a squeeze. I actually have a tool that, um, it's called a crimp cover tool. <laughs> Again, something that's, you know, I don't use that often, so I put it away. But it, it works, but it's a, just a single-use tool, so I don't think it's all that useful. I probably could have, I mean, th these fit in here, but just a bigger one might have um, just been a teeny bit easier. All right, just snip off your thread, let it kind of lay. That came out good. So now I have this part of my, my tassel done. All right, so get that done and then meet me back here and we'll add the other part on. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back and now I just want you to take your larger piece and do the same sequence we did as the smaller piece. Just make sure when you end that you're ending the same with the same beads on one end as the other because this is where, this is how we're going to be clasping it. So you want to make sure your sequence is the same. All right, so go to your happy place.
do you stringing, <laughs> and then meet me back here. We'll put it all together. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back. So let's, here's my piece, all done. So let's connect it to the other end of the ring. So just like before, pick up a crimp, come on through. Tool. Come on, you. There we go. Come through. You want a little play in the loop. Don't worry about this part yet because we can fix that when we connect the other side. Just like that. So you want to make sure it'll move around on the loop a little bit. If you're, you know, if you've cut off your other loop. All right. I'm going to crimp. I'm going to get a cover. Cover on. it up. There we go. Clip that off. So here's the other end. I'm just gonna my piece is a little bit long. Oops, I'm just gonna clip that off. Put on another crimp, just like that. Come through my toggle bar. Come back through the crimp. And however many beads. get through, so I'm just going to come through like so. And then I'm going to make sure that this is not kinked. You don't want it kinked, but you don't want a lot of uh, loose wire showing, so just play with it until it feels good. Remember, leave room for your crimp. Make sure you, it's nice and, you know, it's got some give to it. You don't want it you know, you don't want to kink it up. Alright, so let's just give that a crimp. Put on our bead, our crimp cover. I knew I wouldn't get that on the first try. Just like that. Okay. Make sure it's down in there. Squeeze. Squeeze. Clip that off. And we're done. So get that done and then meet me back here and we'll We'll look at our necklaces. All right, see in a few. Okay, we're back, and here are our necklaces. So cute, great for the summer. When you when you um, close it, you have a pretty little bead on either side. Um, you can do you know any beads you love. I think this is such a fun project. Definitely beginner project. You can all do this. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you wear it in the summer. Can't wait for white t-shirts and these. I think it'd be so pretty. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.